In this video, we'll be covering outliers, linearity, and normality. And I'll be sharing with you residual analysis, residual plot, and histogram using Microsoft Excel. What is the purpose of a residual analysis? Yeah, the purpose is to detect outliers. And when we talk about residuals, yeah, they are the observed errors, yeah, which is the difference between actual values and the predicted values. Now, from this residuals, we are going to calculate the standard residuals. Yeah, and what is the formula? It's the residuals divided by standard deviation of the residuals. We are converting the residuals to Z values. And from the standard residuals, we will get to know how far the residuals deviate from its mean yeah, in the units of standard deviation. And uh, what is the rule of thumb to detect an outlier? Okay, an outlier will be, yeah, if it's, that's going to be a residual plus minus 3 and above, uh, then we say it's an outlier. Now, let me show you using Microsoft Excel. Yeah? So, I'll be using this hypothetical data, which is the sales of headscarf. I have sales here, which is the dependent variable, and I have income, which is the independent variable. So, how do we uh, calculate the residuals? You go to your data, data analysis, and regression. Yeah. So, we need to insert the input range, y. Yeah. y is your sales, which is the dependent variable. And then we have your x, which is your dependent variable. So yes, we have to take labels because we have considered the labels as well. And our confidence interval is 95%. Yeah, uh, Alpha is 0 0.05. Where would be the output range? I want the output range to be here. And over here, they have a dialog box for residuals. I will tick on residuals, standard residuals, and residuals plot. Yeah, these are the things that I need. And we click OK. Okay, from the data generated, we have to focus on the residual output. I've transferred the residual output to a new worksheet, and I've included the sales data, which is the observed data. Yeah, the actual data. So you can see this is the predicted sales and this is the uh, actual sales. So the value here for the residuals is the actual sales minus the predicted sales, which is 200 minus 195, 5.7. So that's how you got 4.2. And for the second value, the actual value here is 1000 and the predicted sales is 1020. So when you minus the actual with the predicted, you get negative 20, yeah, because the predicted value here is greater than the actual value. So that's how we got the residuals, yeah, which is your observed error here. So how do we get these standardized residuals? Yeah, so we have to use this formula. It's residuals, which we already get over here. Divide by the standard deviation of the residuals. So we can calculate the Standard deviation of the residuals is only calculated for us, but I can show you how we got the standard residuals. Yeah, so how do we get the standard deviation of the residuals? Equal sign STD EV standard deviation. You select the data for the residuals, yeah, and you click enter. So this is the value you get. This is the standard deviation of the standard deviation of the residuals yeah so how i got this first value here yeah it's just a fun equal so you take the residual i'm taking the first residual i divide with the standard deviation so it's 0 0.0324999 and so on so you can you see these two values are the same yeah so i just repeat once again how we get these standard residuals is residuals divided by the standard deviation of the residuals. Yeah. So now, we want to use the standard residuals to see 
whether do we have any outliers yeah so how do we do that yeah we need to check the standard residuals yeah if the values okay are plus minus three and above is considered an outlier so i'll remove this yeah so we can see yeah we have yeah three it's an outlier over here yeah yeah so outliers are the one that are going to create some problem and distort your analysis so outliers need to be removed because they would be bringing in different kind of functionality to your uh, analysis yeah okay so i think that's the only one here yeah that's the only outlier so technically when we say outlier we are trying to say that that particular data do not yeah belong to this data set yeah so that's one use okay of this uh, residual analysis in order for you to determine the outliers yeah next we'll be looking into some regression assumptions uh, and uh, i'll share with you some of the assumptions that you can uh, check using microsoft excel the first one is linearity yeah, so we're going to see whether it's a linear relationship so li linearity we can usually check using the scatter plot yeah so if you have the scatter plot yeah for the uh, sales and income then you can see that it's showing a linear relationship yeah that's one way yeah to check the second way to check for linearity is using the residual plot yeah so this is the residual plot that we generated using the uh, regression output so in order for us to indicate yeah whether uh, this data meets the linearity assumption so what we need to do is that we need to check that the data is randomly scattered about zero okay the data must be randomly scattered yeah about zero and it's not showing any trend over here okay probably it's not showing a any kind of trend yeah probably over here it's not showing the trend is going up or going down okay or it's a u shape no there's no trend over here yeah so technically if you look at this data it's totally scattered yeah so that clearly indicates that okay the data is linear in relationship yeah so we can use the residual plot so one as i mentioned earlier we can use the scatter plot to determine linearity uh, we can see there's a very clear cut it has a linear relationship secondly we can use the residual plot and i repeat again uh, the data has to be randomly scattered yeah about zero yeah in order for us to determine that it meets the linearity assumption Next, we want to look into normality. Yeah? We can use a histogram. We can use uh, the residual output yeah, that we generated earlier in order for us to create our histogram. Yeah? We'll be using the standard residuals to create our histogram. So what we have to do is first, we need to create a bin here. Yeah? For all the uh, histogram, you know, histogram has its bins. Yeah? So if you talk about... Um, Histogram, yeah, we start at 3, 2, yeah, 3 standard deviation, 2 standard deviation, 1 standard deviation, 0, yeah, and we have again, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, yeah. So, we have our standard residuals. Remember, I've mentioned earlier, um, why are we converting our residuals to standard residuals? because we are converting residuals into z values yeah so we're going to use a z distribution here yeah so we have our bin yeah this is how you just create a bin over here next what you do you go to data data analysis and you click on histogram okay yeah so input range okay for the input range we'll be picking up the standard residuals yeah and next for the bean range we'll be using the bean range that we have created yeah we have included the labels and we need to say where do we want the output range yeah we would want the output range to be here 
and we want a chart output. You click OK. So you can see Excel has already created the histogram for you. Yeah? So you can see the more here is the one that's going to be the outliers, yeah, which is falling over there. Now, from this histogram, we can interpret the normality assumption. So you can see the histogram, yeah, it clearly shows that it is positively skewed, yeah, but it's just a slight skew over here, yeah. So that's how we can track the normality assumption by using histogram and we can generate the histogram using Microsoft Excel. So watch out for my coming video yeah, on multiple linear regression.